Thank you for choosing to watch this video. If you enjoyed, please drop it a like and subscribe to my channel. To start off, mount your slotted bead on your hook. Here I'm using an ideal jig hook from Partridge of Redditch. Once you've got your bead mounted, put your hook in your vise, test the hold and the hook. Catch on your thread behind the bead, trying to position it properly first, and you want to build up a little dam of thread to hold the bead in place while you tie the rest of the fly. The disadvantage of using a fine thread as I am here is it takes quite a lot of wraps to hold the bead in place. Trim off your waist tag of thread. Then continue to lay down your underbody to the end of the shank. Next we want to catch in the tail, which is a fine bunch of Cool Bright Floss number 3. You want to catch this in for the full length of the body, binding it down back up to the bead, trying to make sure you catch in all the fibres. Don't worry too much as we will want to build a bit of a taper into the fly, so we'll run a few layers of thread wraps up to the bead. Take your time to make sure you catch in the tail right down to the end of the underbody, so we get a nice clean end to the fly. Before you start really working on building in the taper, you can catch in the body material, which is the quill subs. Catching this in at the bead and tying it in for the full length of the body again maintains control of the profile and will help avoid any unsightly bumps and lumps. Now tidy up the underbody and make sure you're happy with this. It's worth taking time to make sure that you smooth it out properly. Any unevenness will be magnified when you wrap the body. As you're doing this, you can spin your bobbin anti-clockwise. This will make the thread lie flatter and make it easier to form a smooth underbody. Take care as you wrap the body to ensure we don't leave any unsightly gaps. Don't be afraid to go backwards and clear up any lumps, bumps or gaps that you're not happy with. You can wind the body material right up to the bead and then catch in with your thread. Let it take three or four wraps and then trim off the waist. Tidy up the waist ends if you want. And now I'm applying a coat of UV resin to the body. You could use a normal fly tying varnish or something like hard as nails, but you would have to wait for this to dry before you proceed with the tying. The beauty with the UV resin is you can manipulate it without rushing and then set it immediately with the torch. Of course this coating on the body is not essential, it just makes for a much more robust fly.
Once the body is finished, you want to position the thread a mill or two behind the bead for where we want to place the CDC hackle. As you can see, I've stripped half the fibres away from this feather for a previous fly. So you catch the barbules in a clamp, trim away the stock, and we're going to catch those into a split thread. So if you spin your bobbin to flatten the thread, If you wait on the needle, sometimes it lies a bit flatter. Catch it on your finger and insert the needle to split the thread. Then, holding your finger within the split thread, position the CDC in with the clamp and release the thread. And the weight of the bobbin should trap the barbules in the thread. Then, spin your bobbin to lock the CDC in you want to spin it quite a lot to make sure it's properly locked in Once you're happy, wind it on as you would a normal hackle, folding it back a bit to keep the barbels pointing roughly where you want. This doesn't matter too much as we'll put a little collar of dubbing in front which will position the barbels where we want. Next is dub on small amount of ice tub to form our collar. You want to dub this needle quite tightly so we don't catch in and trap too much of the CDC. If you angle your thread slightly towards the bead it will help avoid trapping the CDC. Once we're happy with this we'll apply some UV resin or varnish to the thread. And whip finish. If you've used a UV resin as I have, set it with a torch. then trim away your thread. Next, cut our tail to length, just slightly beyond the bend of the hook. And that's the fly finished. A little check on, make sure everything's sitting where we like and there's not too many stray fibres. Again, thank you for watching this video. Any comments or feedback are always welcome. And if there's a fly you'd like to see me tie, just leave a note in the comments and I'll see what I can do.